RAM, what exactly does it do? How do you know you're not overspending on it? Stick around and I'll give you a simple guide to RAM sticks and how you should spend your money wisely. Hi, if you're new to the channel, I'm Adam from Months and PCs, and we love breaking down tech to help you guys understand and make better informed decisions when buying. We also try our best to keep things light and slightly entertaining, so if that's your thing, do consider subscribing. Let's get to the conversation of random access memory, or RAM for short. RAM's a core PC component and will determine how much your computer do and at what speed. It's essentially a high speed short term memory. So how does it work? When you click to open an application, the processor requests the data needed. This is then transferred from your storage, your hard drive, SSD, and then moved into the RAM. The higher speeds of the RAM means the data can be sent to the processor and processed more efficiently. Obviously having more applications open requires a higher RAM capacity. And that's the basics. Let's break it down a little more. Some systems will have more than one stick of RAM, and it's very common to have a motherboard that will work in dual channel mode, meaning it will share the workload between two sticks and work a little more efficiently. When looking for RAM, you will see specs such as DDR4 or 3200 megahertz or CL16. Let's look at DDR4 first. DDR stands for double data rate and has been the naming choice for RAM since 2000. After DDR was DDR2, then DDR3, and so on and so forth. The current mainstream used RAM is DDR4. DDR5 is available, but very few motherboards or CPU support it at this time. Each version of the RAM has improved speeds and a slightly different design to stop you inserting the wrong type of RAM into your motherboard. Let's look at the speed of RAM. The first deciding factor is what megahertz you want your RAM to be. The megahertz, very similarly to CPU megahertz, is how many times a second data can be accessed on the RAM. So 3200 megahertz, for example, is 3.2 billion times a second but that is dependent on the motherboard and CPU being compatible. These specs can be found on the manufacturer's websites. If a CPU can't handle data coming in that quick, you will find your RAM is held back to the level the CPU can handle. More often than not, if you've taken your RAM out of your system or you've just built your new PC, you will need to enable higher speeds in the BIOS. Stick around and I'll show you how. So what does the CL stand for? Now, this is the part fewer people understand, but can make a big difference to performance. You'll see on all RAM sticks a CL rating, and this stands for Column Address Signal Latency, or CAS Latency for short. This is the amount of clock cycles it takes for the RAM to access a specific piece of data from one of its columns and to have it available to the CPU. The lower the number, the better the performance. So, to recap the basics, you need to ensure you're getting the right DDR type of RAM for your system. Most modern systems are a DDR4. Ideally, you want the highest storage amount your budget can afford, although 16 gigabytes is a good all-rounder for gaming. The speed you want to be aiming for high frequency, but again, 3200 megahertz is one of the more popular options without breaking the bank. CAS latency, again, if you can afford RAM with a lower latency, go for it, but I would say something with around about CL16 rating would suffice for most modern day tasks and gaming. Finally, you need to check whether your motherboard supports dual channel mode, and is this gonna be the most efficient for your system? So if we jump onto Amazon and type in RAM 16 gigabytes, 3200 megahertz, we'll see here, first couple are sponsored. They've got very few reviews. I wouldn't go anywhere near them. Go for the name brand. So here we've got Corsair. So let's just click on that. So that's 89 pounds for two sticks, and that's with RGB. And we know RGB obviously makes a computer go faster. Um, next one, we've got Crucial Ballistics, that's 3200 megahertz, DDR4, CL16. They're usually a bit low profile, so if you've got a big heat sink for your CPU, that's quite good. And one more here, HyperX Fury Black. Again, similar specs, two sticks, and they're also quite a low profile, and they're 82.99. I will put links to these in the description below. Let's have a quick look at how we activate the speeds in the BIOS. So to jump in the BIOS, all you've got to do is restart your computer and let's click delete a few times and it should jump us straight into the BIOS. So that's throwing me into the BIOS here. So you can see before you do anything, your DDR speed is 
at its set, which is at 2133. That's the standard for DDR4. We want to be taken up to this advertise speed, which is at 3200. So I am going to need to change the XMP and I'm just going to flick it on. Now, if we go into the memory section here, it's set up so the XMP profile one is DDR4 for 3200 megahertz. So by enabling that, that will then take my RAM speed up to 3200, as opposed to running at the default speed of 2133. Now this is the MSI BIOS. EVGA, Gigabyte and all the other manufacturers have got their own. So it will look a little bit different to this, but it will all say XMP. Look for that. Once you've got it, just turn it on and it's as easy as that to uh, get your speeds up. You then need to just click the X and save it. Make sure you do save it. If you quit without saving, it won't change anything. And that should then put your computer into a boot up with your RAM at the higher speeds. So if we then go onto our task manager and into memory, we can see here that our speed is 3200 megahertz. So we know that that's worked. So it's as easy as that. Guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you give us a thumbs up if you've learned something today. Maybe check out our CPU breakdown if you haven't already, and we'll catch you in the next one.